evening and welcome to the fifth quarter. Another huge day of Saturday football this afternoon at the MCG. It was the Bombers, but Andy, it came at a cost. James Heard playing game number 200 taken from the field in what looked like a fairly serious injury. Uh, look, we'll talk a bit more about it a little bit later, Chris, but it was just almost predictable, wasn't it? I mean, such has been his career. The nature of the injuries that he's sustained have been remarkable. They're never just a simple little injury. He finds remarkable ways to hurt himself. It looked like it had cast mm. a big black cloud over the Bombers, but their leadership after half-time, particularly from blokes like Jason Johnson and Matthew Lloyd, Adam McPhee, was something to behold. I reckon we might be talking a bit about Jason Ackermanis from one Brownlow medalist to another. Yes. And Ackers is Ackers. Some explosive comments later in the program on Shane Crawford and also about Collingwood, the physique of the Collingwood players. So look forward to that. The Swans over the Crows tonight. And of course, uh, we'll talk about West Coast uh, surviving a last quarter comeback. Yeah, finally good to, to see the Hawks showing a bit yeah, of spirit. Absolutely. That was exactly what Peter Schwab would have been looking for from them down at York Park today. They never probably got close enough to look like winning chances, but they certainly flew the flag. But the story of the, doubt without, well, the, story of the day without any doubt was the injury to James Hurd. And it was at the MCG where the Bombers went on after the Tigers led by four points at half-time. A remarkable second half. The Bombers ended up winning by 13 goals. Lloyd kicked nine. Murphy, three for the Bombers. And Matthew Richardson, a star, with six. But uh, James Heard, Andy, uh, that was the incident. A knee from the back. It looked for a moment as though it was right in the kidney. So Well, that was the fear, awkward. wasn't it? I guess the real fear was that he was going to have done some damage to his kidneys. That, that we know has taken a few players in its time in footy. He looked terrible as he was coming off the ground. Wonder what he was thinking. I mean, he's just had such a brilliant but blighted career, this bloke. Fortunately, the news is pretty good. We're going to be speaking to Robert Shaw a bit later. I'm sure he'll have an update on Hurd's injury, but the kidneys have been pretty mm. much all clear except for a bit of bruising. So that's the best news that James Hurd and his family could have, could have hoped for. Well, James Hurd's injury wasn't the only one this afternoon at the MCG. Richmond. Wayne, Captain Wayne Campbell copped a heavy knock from Kepler Bradley and some real shoulder problems, the left shoulder for Wayne Campbell. And there he is on the interchange bench. And the other injury, oh, what this one to Rory Hilton. And really, out of play... And so innocuous. I mean, he's obviously had problems with his knees in the past. He was shattered on the bench. Not on the, fr the, the, the upset turn to frustration as he threw his boots over. The physio, Noel Duncan, had to go and retrieve those from the building site. But clearly frustrated, angry, out mm. of contract in 2005, Rory Hilton. It's going to be tough to see what the, how the Tigers play that particular energy. He's playing pretty good footy yeah, in the first absolutely. half too, which was the frustrating thing. Wayne Campbell looks like it's not as bad as we might have first thought. He might only be a couple of weeks on the sideline. So good news for the Richmond skipper, bad news for Rory Hilton. Well, it was a big win by the Bombers this afternoon. Let's have a listen to what Kevin, Kevin Sheedy had to say after the match. It was one of our best wins we've had for quite some time, to be honest. And under the circumstances, uh, you'd have to probably seriously uh, want to keep that team and get a ball signed on it. Yeah, I think that uh, some of the young kids really put their hand up. I mean, our season's been on the line a bit lately, let's be honest about it all. Um, just one of those situations where, you know, I mean, you, you can talk and have meetings all, your, all the time and you just got to get out and do things. Well, Andy, pretty happy, I think, because it was a very, very good second half. Oh, some of the signs after halftime were outstanding for the Bombers. The next three are pretty big. They've got the West Coast Eagles over at Subi, then they've got St Kilda and Port Adelaide. So with a couple of their big guns on the sidelines, it'll be interesting to see how the Bombers cope with those. Well, time to cross to Crown Casino, where James Hurd was meant to be celebrating his <laughs> 200th game and say good evening to Damien Booth. Damien. Yes, thanks very much, boys. Well, it's a pleasure to be here with uh, Essendon assistant coach Robert Shaw, who uh, is celebrating uh, James Hurd's 200th game here at Crown Casino tonight. But, Robert, something slightly unusual. The guest of honour's not here. Well, the limo's here, and... Um no, unfortunately, he's, uh, he's in the hospital and will be in hospital probably tonight and uh, into tomorrow with uh, some damage to his rib area that uh, the doctors are pretty concerned about, so we'll just have to wait and see, but uh, it's an unusual function. Rob, uh, sorry, mate, Andy Maher here. What, what was the mood like at half-time? What, what, when you've come in and the players have come in and they've realised what's happened to Herdy, what, can you sum up what the mood was like? Um, pretty down because we weren't playing well. It wasn't much of a game, Andy. It was very windy. Uh, both sides weren't uh, playing anywhere near their best footy. It was pretty ordinary and really wasn't an issue. Heard, heard wasn't playing. Lucas was off. And with the blokes we've already got out, it was really a matter of um, 
trying to put the pieces together the jigsaw and what happened after half time was um well you couldn't read about it yeah. rob it was fantastic you must be wrapped with your, some of your senior players that really stood up like jason johnson yeah it was a good mixture kepler bradley and ted richards were fantastic playing only in their early part of their career Johnson, Mercedes and Allen in the middle were awesome and of course Lloyd's nine goals so uh, funny game footy look we've been criticised for not finishing on games and when we go kick 17 in the second half to four if you can work it out let me know. Shorey any idea how long Hurdy will be out for? Um, they're not sure I, I've got no idea I haven't played with the broken rib if, if his ribs are broken what's that four to six yeah but um I've got no idea, Andy. I'm sorry. It's amazing the way he finds ways of getting hurt. You mentioned Ted Richards. That was as good a game as I've seen him play today. Has he, has he now cast himself primarily as a defender? Well, he has played, and the good thing about him in the reserves, we have played him a lot as defender. We, uh, our preference is that he plays up forward. But because we wanted to, well, we just went for it after half time. We put McPhee to centre half forward. So we needed uh, someone to play in the back line. Ted Richards was uh, fantastic on um, Schultz, who kicked six last week, and only got a couple of possessions uh, this week. Rob, you mentioned Adam McPhee. Has he surprised you with the way he's performed? I mean, he is just playing in, sensational, in a sensational way at the moment. Well, he is. He started off as a half-back flanker and one of the best in the comp. We've moved him into the midfield with great results at times this year, and, of course, today... He's basically gone to the true centre-half forward position and was a real avenue to attack for us. Well, Robert, the challenges keep on coming. There's a number of sides around sort of the bottom half of the eight sort of vying for positions at the moment. Are you uh, take on another one in West Coast next Friday night? Yeah, well, it's a very interesting game. They got over for, for a win, which kept them in, um, in uh, contention for the, uh, for, the, for the top eight. Uh, we had a good win against Fremantle over there last year, so going over there is not too bad. We're going with a few blokes missing, so it'll be interesting to see how we go. But, you know, I think the biggest challenge tonight is uh, finishing off Peter Jackson's drink cart. We've been, <laughs> <laughs> We've been here for three hours, and we're giving it a fair old nut. Well, Robert, I better let you get back to it. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Boys, back hey, to you in the studio. Right <laughs> Thanks very much, uh, David. Uh, uh, the Peter Jackson, Apex card. Fantastic. He's a beautiful so. host, Peter Jackson. Well, Essendon's big win. There was plenty of other great highlights on a Super Saturday of football. And we start at the MCG. A great mark by Kelvin Moore. Great mark taken by Kelvin Moore. One-hander. Barry the Difference Hall. A brilliant right foot snap. McGregor fists it away. Fists it. Oh. Clever tap for Hall from the pocket. Barry Hall at 50 seconds. How good's this bloke? Matthew Pavlich. Bell from the step to half forward. Ricochets off to Pavlich. No problem. Scatters the footy from 50. I'll take your Matthew and I'll raise your Matthew. <laughs> Classic Lloyd. Lloyd again. What a beauty. Our Saturday special <laughs> regular, Chris <laughs> Judd. Playing in front this time, trying to kick the ball was Hay, taken by Judd. Judd from 15 metres out, quick snap, what a goal. He's got three. Sean McManus turns back the clock in the Subiaco Thriller. Crashes the pack. Hayes will be having a rest up forward. Gives it to McManus from 45 metres out. The veteran McManus goes for home and kicks up your team. Some brilliance from Adam McPhee at the MCG. Side attacking 50. Tuck pushed out of it by McPhee. Play on the call. He snaps around the body and goes. How good is this courage from Brett Kirk? Blazing high and wide. Not terribly heavy. And we thought we'd throw in a regular, a, a regulation Matthew Richardson goal. But again, the blasting kick. Oh, Richo! Oh, he plays on. That was very Matthew Richardson. He might get a goal out of it. He does, and who can kick a right foot banana from the top of the square like that? But Richo. Des Hedlund, the get, the give, the get, and the goal. Kick partly smothered, but the Dockers there in numbers. McManus to Hedlund. Great stuff at Subiaco Oval. Now, before we go to a break, I want you to take a look at this. Down at York Park, an incident involving an Eagles trainer. 
and it resulted in Nathan Thompson. Now you'll see the trainer walk between oh, the man no. on the mark and Nathan Thompson and 50 metres of water to Nathan Thompson. Doesn't he know who coaches the West Coast Eagles? <laughs> Because I am going to be the next Australian Idol. I am. 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 I'm going to be the next Australian Idol. Australian Idol. Channel 10. Seriously. Australian Idol. Premier Channel 10. Tuesday on 10. Need some practice? Free picture messaging to anyone on any network till the end of September this year. Join Vodafone today. Have you got flight vibes? When you're asked the question, make it count. Vibes gets the party started. Pump it up with a Vibes DJ mixer. Plug in the speakers, hook up the microphone, and you're set to party. Vibes gives you two top-loading CD players, scratch pad with built-in sound effects, echo and pitch controls, bass boost, and cross fader. It also works as a sing-along karaoke with your TV. Mix it like the pros with Vibes. There's Vibes party lights and karaoke towers. Get the party started with Vibes in stores now. Sunrise Oversea, the soulful number one album from the John Butler Trio. Featuring the song of the year, Zebra, Sunrise Oversea, in stores now. That was refreshing. Yeah. I think it's the line. Bundaberg Rum Dry and Lime, surprisingly refreshing taste. At Casual Living Furniture, save up to 50% during our manufacturer's once a year stock take sale. Fantastic furniture savings, all at up to 50% off, or until sold out. Now extended till July 18. Think Living, think Casual Living. Keswick, Marion and Enfield. Leatherworld stock take sale is now on. Monaro six-seater leather modular, $2,790. Many more specials available at the stock take sale. Leatherworld, open seven days. Rogue gets it all. Amazing talent! And 9.30 Tuesday, he's got the...